So basically, there's the reference, and what I'm doing is drawing it, uh, well, a couple times. I think it's a total of four times. Three times while looking at it, and uh, once just kind of uh, doing it from, not really memory, but just in in the spirit of the same thing. Um, you'll notice uh, in the end that they're all going to look different. It's, you know, I can never... Well, I wouldn't even want to try to make it the same every time, but uh, this process allows um, it to be a warm up as well as you know good practice and trying to uh, you know get better at you know drawing from reference of what and stuff. Blah, blah. Yeah, okay. But um, the reason I'm doing this is because I, I was listening to a, uh, an interview with an artist and they were talking about how their mentor would always uh, you know for paintings. Or illustrations, they would always paint it twice because the second time is always better. And so there's something there in that if you do something the first time, you kind of experience the the mistakes and all of the the things that kind of uh, stand out to you. And the second time you do it, it it'll be a little bit easier. Um, and you know, I do end up painting this. Um, I think that there's a more natural kind of. Uh, gesture that I'm trying to go for by uh, loosening up and I think allowing yourself to just kind of start drawing the, the thing or whatever it might be whether it's a character or uh, from reference or uh, landscape whatever it doesn't matter but like uh, after drawing it a couple of times you sort of loosen up and I think uh, what happens is your natural um, kind of uh, kind of like brush not brush stroke but like I don't know how to describe it like a a certain curve that your hand nor, nor like naturally does kind of, and I compare this often to uh, your signature when you do your autograph you kind of have a developed kind of uh, finesse to it but uh, when I'm doing a reference study uh, sometimes I get caught up in trying to make it accurate and I think that kind of gets in the way um, of that natural look so I I mean I'm trying to do this as an approach to do it uh, to, to access that natural looking um, flowy line work uh, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about when you look at the comparisons I don't, I don't know if it's going to be too obvious but um, also as I'm doing this later on I'm loosening up in terms of not being a slave to the reference what that means is I don't I'm not really trying to make it perfect because uh, it's not about perfection at least for what I intend to learn from this and I want to actually uh, just kind of uh, discover what happens when I do it a couple times and you'll You'll see that the comparisons are, you know, some of them look a bit more cartoony, some of them look a bit more uh, closer to the reference, and some of them are just way, I mean, I only did it four, but you see what I'm saying, or you'll see what I'm saying. Um, and what I picked up on this is that, the, the what I, well, what I remember and what kind of stuck with me are the wrinkles in the clothes, the, the uh, direction of the, the thumb and the hand and, and the hair, the shape. And all, uh, th right now what you're seeing is um, I'm drawing without the reference and obviously it's not too close but it's a character it's got the, it could resemble the the pose and the, and the the content of the reference but really it's um, an interpretation and so <laughs> already it looks kind of weird and wonky but you know it, it, it's doing this last step of trying to do it without the reference sort of embeds it in your mind and um, I think I could draw a similar pose now without having to look at a picture um, with the uh, with the same wrinkles, with the same direction of the hand and um, where the person is looking, and uh, you know there's there's a liberty that you can take at this point and t sort of uh, change things up. It doesn't have to be exactly the way you remember it. And so I added that part at the bottom. Um, what's happening here? I guess I drew it a fifth time wait no I can't even count whatever but uh, this this last one I think was there four there was four yeah there was four so I guess I did it twice without reference I did this like a couple days ago <laughs> whatever stop judging me geez anyway so this is a uh, you, you could see the the natural kind of like looseness here that I'm talking about well that I was talking about earlier and there's a kind of a I think this speaks more to my pencil stroke or my style, if you will. I don't, I don't know if it's style, but uh, this this is kind of revealed or reveals itself after doing it a couple times. I think um, I wish I could just do that right away, but I have to sort of loosen up and warm up. 
Um, so if you look at the final drawings, and uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, they're all different. I mean, the proportions of the eyes and the uh, the, the face and how, how big the head is compared to the body on, on all of them are pretty you know different. So it varies, and this just just shows like I'm not perfect. And not that I was even trying to be. Uh, so you know, it's a, a fun exercise, um, and of course, so the painted version or the process for the painted version. Uh, which looks like this um, is included in this as a mini tutorial um, in this terms patreon patreon term thingy etc all right uh, so this terms package of awesomeness includes everything from the junker battle and, and of course some extras so this video includes sketching ideas of the mech laying in color for multiple necks that i end up picking from uh, painting and rendering that said mech and then the last part of this uh, time lapse is uh, the character from start to finish and remember of course this term does include the full time i mean not the full time the full real time footage i really gotta stop recording this stuff so late at night it's like 3 a.m all right anyway uh